The MacBook Air is ridiculously popular, and for good reason, it's basically the world's default laptop. And now, here I am at Apple Park, having a play with the brand new 2022 MacBook Air, and it is a huge upgrade. We get Apple's new M2 chip, a bigger and brighter screen, a 1080p webcam, it's thinner, it's lighter, we have MagSafe now, plus faster charging, better speakers, more and faster RAM, and obviously, most importantly, it comes in four colors, including a very snazzy new Starlight and Midnight, which is kind of like a matte black with an ever so slight blue tint to it. I must admit, I'm kind of torn between them. I'm not sure which I prefer. Which one would you go for? Now, one downside of the new Air is it is $200 or 250 pounds more expensive than the current M1 Air, which you can still buy. And of course, that's also before you upgrade your RAM or storage. However, on the flip side, if you were thinking about buying a MacBook Pro 14, while this won't be quite as powerful, and we'll have to wait until I can get this back in the studio to properly compare it, and also we don't get that 120Hz ProMotion, considering the Air is $800 cheaper, it's gonna be a much better option for most of us. Now, the first thing I noticed is that we've lost that familiar MacBook Air tapered design. It looks very much like the new Pro 14 and 16. And actually, one slight issue is it can make it a little bit tricky to pick up sometimes. But overall, Apple says it's actually 20% smaller in volume than the current Air, and it's also 50 grams lighter and a little bit thinner overall. And that's particularly impressive considering we also have a bigger screen. It's now 13.6 inches up from 13.3, although that's mainly down to the much thinner bezels. And so yes, like the pros, we have that notch. It is a compromise of the design, but the trade-off is we get an incredible webcam. The resolution's been bumped up to 1080p, and with the M2's improved ISP, or image signal processor, we get even better video quality, and especially in low light. Now I'm here at the WWDC conference, and I actually brought my current M1 Air, and also my Pro 16, to the event. And initially I started making my notes on the Air, but because we were outside, it was a little bit tricky to see the screen, so I switched to my Pro 16, which is brighter. So I'm really happy to see that they've actually bumped the brightness of the new Air from 400 to 500 nits, which makes it a lot easier to use outdoors. It is still the same resolution though, which is roughly halfway between Full HD and 4K, which I think is a good balance, and it is also still 60 Hz, there is no Pro Motion here. But it is a touch bigger, it's brighter, and actually more color accurate, so it's still a pretty big upgrade. MagSafe also comes to the Air now, which frees up the other two USB Thunderbolt 4 ports, as you don't have to use that for charging anymore. Now, I did ask Apple, and sadly, the new Air still can only output to one external display. That is something that you'll need to go to a Pro model for. But MagSafe does also bring with it a faster charging option. Now, by default, you get a 30-watt charger, but for $20 more, or it's free if you go for a higher spec, you can get the new dual USB 35-watt charger. It charges the air in the same time, but you can plug in your phone or your AirPods or whatever else to top up just from the one plug. Now, personally, I think I would go for the new 67-watt option, but it doesn't have the two extra USBs, unfortunately, basically because this is the same charger already available for the pros. Now, the keyboard and touchpad haven't really changed much, although the function row is now full size, whereas on the older Air, the keys were a little bit smaller. We do also now get quad speakers, that's two tweeters and two woofers, and while I haven't yet been able to test the sound side by side, if the new Air is anything like the Pros, it's going to sound incredible. So far, so good then, but what I'm most excited about is this new M2 chip. The MacBook Air, along with the also refreshed MacBook Pro 13, are the first two devices to come equipped with the M2. Now, speaking of the Pro 13, here they are side by side, the new Air and the new Pro 13. It's virtually identical to the outgoing model on the outside. It even still has a touch bar, and along with the chunkier bezels, it is starting to look a bit dated, and it has an active cooling fan. The MacBook Air is still a fanless design, so under sustained, longer loads, like gaming or if you're rendering, the Pro 13 will be a bit more powerful, but I'm keen to test that in practice and see if there's really that much difference. But that does also mean the Air is completely silent no matter what you're doing. So what does the M2 bring to the table? Well, battery life remains the same. Apple say you can get up to 18 hours of video playback. And you know what? That's fine. It's already very good. Instead, we are getting a nice boost in performance. The M2 has an 18% faster CPU, a 35% faster GPU at full power, and also a 40% faster neural engine compared to the M1. 
So it's not quite the radical difference we saw in the transition from Intel to the M1, but it is still a welcome upgrade. And together with up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory, which also now has higher bandwidth, and also together with a new faster media engine that makes it a much more capable video editing laptop, I'm really keen to see if anyone actually needs to shell out for a MacBook Pro, this might be all you need. Of course, all MacBooks will be getting the new macOS Ventura update when it comes out later in the year, and I will be making a separate video on the new OS upgrades as well, so make sure you stay tuned for that, but it wasn't running yet on these particular laptops. So, for $1,200, or slightly annoyingly £1,250, it is about 20% more expensive. Student and teachers get 100 off that, but it's still a lot of money, and also when you go for a higher spec, which I would recommend, I think 16 gigs of RAM and 512 storage is the sweet spot, it is quite pricey. I say that because I have found on my old Air with 8 gigs of RAM, it often runs out of memory and I have to close applications, so it does depend how you use your laptop, but I would suggest going for 16. However, one thing I can say about Apple products is that they are very well supported in terms of software, they last a long time, and also they retain their value quite well for trade-ins or selling it down the road. So considering you can't upgrade any of the components yourself, if you can, I would pay the extra up front to get the better spec. But also, maybe hold off until us tech reviewers can properly test it and compare it to the old Air, the Pro 13, and also the Pro 14, and also the Windows competition, like the ZenBook 13S OLED and the Dell XPS 13 Plus. But first impressions are very positive. It is a big overhaul inside and out, but what do you think? Are you tempted to buy one when it comes out in July or not convinced? Let me know in the comments below, and also if you have any questions. So that was fun. I am genuinely very excited for the new MacBook Air. The colors are great. It's much faster, much, much nicer screen with that thinner bezel, which it didn't need. And as Tim Cook is being swamped over there, I think people are gonna be swamping into Apple stores to buy the new MacBook Air as well. But stay tuned, full review coming very soon. And if you've got any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. Now I'm gonna try and get a selfie with him without being too annoying.